Blog Talk Radio. Namaste. Hi, everybody. This is Chandi Devi from KarmaCafe.com, and welcome to our show today. Our show is on uh, relationships and the Kundalini. And today we have our very special guest, Chrism, who is a Kundalini master, and he will be talking about the um, effects of Kundalini on relationships, and what happens when one partner has been awakened but not the other and so forth. So we've got a, a lot to cover today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, before I do, I would like to mention, before, um, while I got you all here, uh, there is a Kundalini intensive coming up with Master Chris, and this is going to be, mark your calendar, October 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And it's going to be at the Bandy Canyon Ranch in San Pasquale, California. That's um, San Diego. Let's see. And then we also have two pre-intensive lectures in the same area. One, October 18th, will be at the Love and Light Healing Center. Their phone number is 619-644-1895. Wednesday, October 21st, Prism will be at the Controversial Bookstore, which is the oldest uh, spiritual bookstore in San Diego, uh, I believe. That phone number is 619-296-1560. And, of course, if you um, want any information um, or you need these dates again, just go to Kundalini Awakening Systems with an S, then one dot com Kundalini Awakening Awakening System dot com. Also, you can go to Kundalini Awakening Seminar dot com to get information on the payment and so forth. But I hope you will join us because um, I had the wonderful opportunity to uh, join Prism this past weekend at the Gateway Portal. Is that what what it's called, Prism? Yeah, uh, the uh, the gateway, a, a portal for health and well-being in West Los Angeles. Um, yes, and that yeah. was a really powerful um, weekend that we just spent together. And um, if I'm either too spacey or too racy today, uh, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quite, quite quite an experience, and you know I've had shakti pot and. I've been doing the practices for many, 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 many years, but I can tell you firsthand, Prism, you are a powerhouse. <laughs> yeah, I can't really, you know, uh, take that kind of credit. Uh, you know, it's it's really the the Kundalini that comes through and does these things. I'm merely, uh, uh, I guess, an instrument of that. Yeah. Yeah. But, so. Um, Quite um, quite amazing though, because uh, it, it does apparently flow through you with such ease. It does, so it, it, but but once again, as I discuss with people who attend the seminar, mm-hmm. as as a person is is uh, initially exposed to the Kundalini within them, uh, vis-a-vis uh, Shaktipat by me or, or other other ways to achieve it. Uh, the phenomena will be quite intense, but the body does acclimate eventually. The body does yeah. acc- acclimate to it, and uh, yeah, I mean, even even you within you know within you know you have you have quite a few years of experience, but it does acclimate after a while, mm-hmm. as you know. Yeah, I, I just got to recharge though. Uh, yeah, yeah, you certainly got that. You certainly <laughs> yes, got that. <laughs> you're, you're, oh. I, mean, I, I think you reached an area in in your life expression where where you're able to be qualified to take the next step. There are specific uh, gradations of experience within the Kundalini. The first one, of course, being the transformative aspect. Uh, within the person, so they can actually be able to hold that charge. Uh, they, you know, having the cellular uh, uh, structures and the 
the actual physics of the physical body changed and transformed by the kundalini in order for it to be able to hold the kundalini. And you've had that. You've had that. And so there are other uh, mountains to climb, you know, within that context. And I think that's to you right now. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I... Our show is on relationships. It has been for the past couple of weeks. And uh, you have a couple of really interesting articles posted on karmacafe.com um, on relationships. And uh, I'd like to, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and read from it, and you can um, stop me and um, punctuate. That'll any. be fine. That'll okay. be fine. All right. So the first one, you have two. One is on relationships. One's on marriage. So we can go through that. I'll read it out. Let me see where it go here. Okay. Relationships, as understood with in the context of the emotional interrelationship between two people, are in the limited physical plane as a reflection of the higher self's example of the male and female bonding and connection to a single expression. This has a direct relevance to the Kundalini, the two that are one and the one that is two. So within this context, the relationship is a reflection of the as above, so below concept. People inside of the physical experience may find it quite difficult to locate or find another person who can so exemplify the ideal that the divine union represents. It is the attempt, the striving towards that, counts for the most as we live in the limited physical venue. Even so, okay. it is with... Okay, okay go ahead. Okay. That's, 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 that's quite a bit for folks to chew on right okay. now. Right. And uh, just, just to, to kind of go over just that part, uh, mm-hmm. the two that are one and the one that is two, uh, yeah. from a relationship venue and from this uh, the type of relationship I'm talking about would be one in the relationship between within a romantic uh, Uh environment or a couple's environment Uh, Tantra Mm -hmm. as you know is is basically the exploration of and the acquisition of Kundalini through the dynamics of a relationship a loving uh, relationship where the two individuals will adopt the persona and the activities of the sacred male and the sacred female and in the the physical bonding uh, the sexual physical bonding will resonate and attempt to to form a a, a platform of expression for the higher aspect of the sacred male and sacred female physical bonding which is the kundalini so this is what i'm referring to as as, a, as two people come together within love and and you know within a high form of respect and understanding uh communication uh and, and most importantly love they are being given an opportunity especially if they even know of the word kundalini, especially within that context, the kundalini context, to invite themselves into the higher expression. doesn't mean it's always going to happen. It just means that they are given the opportunity to begin to prepare themselves and condition themselves uh, towards that higher expression. Sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes it takes years. You know, within the tantra, within the tantra format. But this, this is pretty much what I was talking about in the first opening aspect of that, of that um, article. Did that clear it up at all? Yeah. <laughs> so clear as blood, right? What is it a person intends when looking for or choosing a potential mate? This is uh, continuing your um, article which sure. is um, on karmacafe.com. Great I, reading. I, I, I think I'll just let you finish it and then uh, if there okay. are questions. Okay, uh, let me finish. Okay. 
of what are the priorities, what thoughts have formed the basis for particular passions or fantasies or expectations of another. When these questions are considered, then the person can find another that corresponds, knowingly or not. We are not always always conscious of what we seek. Primal needs can be, oh, I'm sorry, primal needs can attach to the thought expectations and seek from them, seek for them from a subconscious vector of searching. The alpha male and alpha female, female scenarios connected to, to the person's emotional needs. Then you go on to say, with Kundalini, it is somewhat different. Integrity and truthfulness, love and freedom are very important. As the Kundalini begins to change the five bodies, the expressions begin to seek a closer resemblance to the higher divine models. Okay, maybe we can talk about um, the five bodies. Sure, the the spiritual body, the mental body, the, the psychological, the ego body, the emotional body, and the physical body. Okay. Those those would be the five bodies that are being referred to. Okay. So the two that are one, this then begins to manifest in the search for another who can embrace these concepts. If already in a relationship, then the support and love and understanding of the changes or the process that one half of the relationship is going into or through can be very helpful doesn't mean they have to understand from an experiential aspect, but from a place of allowing the process to unfold and not going into fear or judgment about it can be very beneficial. Yes, uh, this is a support. This is a support person, a person who understands that that the spouse is going through a, a, a an incredible life change. A, a deeply personal and, de- and a very powerful uh, change in their expression of not just the physical but the emotional and all the other five bodies. Mm-hmm. That person yes. to be able to give them support yes. is supremely important. But go ahead. Yes, they, they need to hold um, space for the person. I've I've read about um, accounts from swamis who, you know, went through that. And for a period of maybe six months or longer, they credit their wives with just allowing well, them to go through that, you know. One of the most famous uh, swamis, I, I'm not sure he ever considered himself a swami, mm-hmm. uh, Gopi Krishna. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he would not have been able to live had his wife not dipped bread into milk and fed him at his weakest point. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody having Kundalini is going to be brought into a life or death experience like he had, but it is as a symbol of of, of how important it is to, to cherish one another inside of a Kundalini context. I don't care who's awakening. I don't care if you're both awakening. That's great. That's great, but let's really, really, really do what we can do to help and serve the other within the context of their awakening dynamic. Okay. And, yet, and you continue here. If this isn't allowed or is in direct blockage of the Kundalini, the relationship can dissolve. The late Kundalini will go on regardless. And if the physical reflection of the divine marriage is lacking, the internal, full being, individual expression will not be we are the two that are one and the one that is two. So we are what we strive to find in another. Correct. It is good to find and share our lives, and it is, and it is needed for the species to continue. But we can have the Kundalini alone, and most of the activations and awakenings are in this context. It is rare to find in a contemporary society another who can understand and support without fear the changes that can present inside of an awakening. Yeah, that's true. It can be quite um, devastating for the partner who is not, um, you know, aware of the process. Well, oh, oh, my, my, and you know, not just the marriage partner, but the parents and the 
the family of the individual, the, the work environment, the, uh, uh-huh. I mean, every everybody can become, you know, shocked and amazed by what their what their brother, sister, friend, spouse are all of a sudden demonstrating in regards to exalted skills or or watching them have a kriya. So yeah, it it, it can be devastating uh, towards a. Uh, a relationship, certainly within the the contemporary sense, but but really in almost any sense of of the idea that we hold that that may not be familiar with the Kundalini process. Uh, so those of you those of you who are listening to this really uh, go to a a a place where you can learn about Kundalini. I don't care if it's Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com or another place. But learn about it. Uh, if your spouse is having this, learn about it. Learn about their condition. Just the same way you'd learn about their condition if they had, you know, some sort of a, uh, a medical issue or, or psychological issue, whatever. This just happens to be much more positive in its expression and, uh, and effect upon the body. But learn about it. Right. Now, when a person inside the Kundalini is searching for social connection, with the idea of having a relationship, it is the qualities that the Kundalini will wish to express that will help one to find the other person. Much depends upon the level of activation a person is in. So if it is a pronounced second chakra activation and only to the point that physical expression of sex will be the overriding priority and this activity will be sought over all others, this will fade, but when the person is inside of it, will burn hot through the system, and these needs will require satisfaction. This is one of the symptoms, like the heat and the cold and the kriyas, or the electrical and blissful phenomena that, in a person's unique way, can have effect for all that come into this area. <laughs> through the details and the urges, Though the details and the urges may be unique to the individual, the needs will be similar. So it is best to have a partner who can understand these changes, but it isn't often the case. So it is important to be able to transmute these urges. Okay, so why don't we go into how how you can go ahead and transmute these urges. Well, for instance... Uh uh, the Shakti pot that was given to you over the weekend, Shandi, uh, you, I, and I'm not even sure it's a confi- conscious effort on your part, but immediately the, the, the already awakened uh, platform within you transmuted the extra uh, uh, Kundalini Shakti pot that you received into a creative force, a creative force within you that, that, Allowed you to just really turn turn the, the the divine love that was gifted into a divine loving creation. Mm, okay, so that's just from your personal perspective, which which I think is 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 uh, you know directly relating to the whole idea of transmutation. Uh, transmutation inside a relationship would be a deepening of the love, a deepening of the respect. A deepening of, uh, of the com- of the communication, a deepening, of, you know, of the uh, integrity. Mm-hmm. These are all avenues of transmutation that can become as an exalted force of of connection between the the people inside of the relationship, uh, but not just inside of the relationship, uh, inside of the relationship with all people that the individual experiences. It is not Kundalini is not just for those within a romantic relationship or a marital relationship, your relationships will become exalted throughout the entire spectrum of human contact and not just of human contact. It will reach straight into nature. It will reach straight into the forces of divine that surround us constantly. Right. <laughs> <It's> a- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> It's a pretty wide a venue of, of interaction. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, I, I had found that, um, you know, animals get 
so attracted to me. I've had snakes cross my path, circle around me, you know, and slither oh, away. Yeah. And it, it, oh, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they will no longer see you as much of a threat unless, until your ego kicks in or some other frequency of uh, of expression kicks in from you that that they may see you in that way. But you'll have birds and insects landing on you and yeah. and uh the animals and the and the and, and the creatures of the natural environment will definitely see you in a different different way. Mm-hmm. And that that is also that is also an 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 extension of the loving relationship that we not only have for each other and for the divine, but that the natural environment, as expressed through the divine towards us, will have for us. Right. And, and I've had, like, children. Children are well aware of it. I've had children in the supermarket let their mother's hand go and come running toward me, and the mother, you know, would be horrified and say, he won't follow you. <laughs> They, they, yeah, the, the, the little ones will definitely know of it. They will not know about it so much, mm-hmm. right. you know, because, you know, they're still inside of their early paradigm of, of, of coming into the world, coming into a broader interaction with the world. But they'll definitely know the divine on a person when they see it. And they look at you. They look at you long and hard and typically with a really big smile. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's an interesting thing uh, I found. <laughs> and little children do that. Okay. Um, okay, so we we transmute these urges, and we have to find a partner who is willing to consummate them with you. Be careful. Now, now, you know, you, you, you can't really just – I don't want people to think that, it, you know, they in order to have kundalini, they have to have a partner. That's not so. Uh, it's within the context of the relationship. If a person wants to – Explore Kundalini within the context of a relationship or a tantric uh, uh, relationship or, or pattern. Then, yeah, then, then typically you're going to need a, a partner to do that with. Right. But when you don't have a partner, it's a perfect time to work on yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Without a doubt. I mean, here's the deal. I mean, you occupy your body. You occupy your five bodies of expression there are there are extremely definitive uh, behavioral modifications that can be uh, practiced by an individual that will certainly condition a person towards the the uh, the awakening of the Kundalini within them and that does not require uh, a partner that requires you partnering with yourself so to speak and making those changes uh, uh, expressive daily and nightly as as you as you you know go through your existence. Uh, this is a personal responsibility. Now, within a, the context of a relationship, when both partners are observing that uh, expression of conditioning towards the Kundalini, well, that that is that is a wonderful thing and. And uh, in a gentle and loving way, each partner can can help the other in in dealing with with the the new dynamic of the life experience. Uh, you know, everything from from work issues and and how to how to be a forgiving person and yet not a doormat. Uh, the strength and tolerance, the the strength and truth, uh, and and the extreme uh, power of forgiveness. You know these these areas can be assisted uh, by a partner saying, "Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah," you know, uh, you know, saying to the to the to the person, "Oh, well, you know, if it were me, maybe I would try to forgive them this way, or I try to d- detach from becoming overly emotional, you know, within a really volatile emotional situation." I mean, it's, it's it, it can be very helpful. For people to kind of bounce ideas and and, and work their way through uh, the conditioning process towards Kundalini until the Kundalini comes, and then and then we get to practice what what, what is understood as surrender to the Kundalini and surrender to that divine expression. And that's a challenge. 
oftentimes is the well, it can it can be it can be a challenge, but the practice for that surrender is 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 as a surrender to the to the uh, the the love from and for another person. Okay, so as we're able to to surrender to the love from and for another person, it is almost as a conditioning for the surrender for and from the love of the divine as it as it begins to transform us within. Yeah. Let me just uh, make uh, tell everyone we're listening to um, Master Chrism, who's talking about Kundalini. He is um, giving a Kundalini intensive in, on October 23rd, 24th, and 25th in San Diego. And um, I highly recommend that you um, join us and sign up. It's You're going to hear more of this. Can you imagine three days of this? It's going to be powerful <laughs> as it is. And it's, it's just so... Um, uh, it, it, it is just so full of shakti, and um, I, I, I'm so glad I, I did get an opportunity to finally um, spend two days uh, with you, Chrism. And let me give a phone number for this intensive. This is the third, first one of its kind, I believe. Um, yep, never, I've never done a, a three-day intensive before, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's 310 eight five nine one eight seven seven and you can call Amonique from Om by A Productions um, to register or you can call Anna at six six one three six one four eight three eight and get more information about this. Uh, it's gonna be a wonderful uh, weekend and I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so the article we're reading from is from karmacafe.com, and that's K-A-R-M-A-C-A-F-F-E. So you can go back and please read it. There's another article you have here on marriage. And uh, let me start here. This is Chrism, by Chrism. What happens when Kundalini comes to one spouse and not the other? Sometimes it can be the cross upon which all of the issues of the marriage come to bear. Sometimes it can be so heavy that the solid timbers of the cross will snap and the contents of the relationship will tumble to the earth. Sometimes the cross of the marriage is strengthened as the love between husband and wife becomes laced with the living gold of the divine marriage, the kundalini. So much the success of a marriage and the loving dynamic of the activated individual will depend on the support of the spouse that isn't being activated at that time. These are the heroic spouses. To stand in the presence of Kriyas and spinal sweeps and simply release the desire to rush their dear spouse off to the hospital is a true and faithful person who can trust and be trusted and who can live by that trust and faith that is their partner in life's wishes, that this be allowed regardless of contemporary panic opportunities. Isn't that true? We, <laughs> I, I've heard this over and over. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, the, 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 the common activity of a spouse watching a career would be to have that finger hovering over the 911 keys of their telephone. And, uh, it, 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 you know, until they get a little more used to what's actually occurring, uh, it can be a bit of a, of a, of a trial. And uh, my, yeah. my heart, and, and, you know, and, I, and, I, and I tip my hat, if I wore a hat, I would tip my hat to those spouses who are able to overcome those, those panic opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's nice if they have an understanding of what's going on. What about couples, though, who, who don't like to reveal, who don't want their partner to really know what, what they're, they're doing? Well, that creates an imbalance in the relationship. But, but not all is lost. Mm-hmm. Shakti, the, the, the emanation that expresses from a kundalini-awakened individual will permeate the house 
It will yeah. permeate the hops, and it can slowly, slowly, gently, gently educate the spouse who who may be ignorant of, of yeah. the, even the idea of, of Kundalini or the, the holy fire of God, or however, however the individuals may wish to to mm-hmm. to frame the experience. Uh, so, so it all is not. It doesn't guarantee a divorce or destruction of the marriage. If one person is active and the other isn't and yet no does not know about the active status of their spouse, it just merely indicates an opportunity for the one who is awakening to begin to observe the divine activities uh, uh, within the safety protocols such as forgiveness and tolerance and trust and communication. Now, the communication may have to be crafted in a way that is is accessible to the the non-activating spouse but that's not that difficult that's just you know a lot of that is just a form of of uh gentle diplomacy that you mm-hmm. know you phrase words in certain ways that don't light up the panic fires in the other person you, for instance you you say yeah my heart, you don't say this. You don't say, oh, honey, my heart is fluttering today, and it feels like I'm going to have a heart attack. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry about that. So you, you don't phrase it that way. <laughs> you just say, oh, I feel so much love for you. My heart is fluttering. <laughs> That's a good way. <laughs> You'll be absolutely truthful. You'll be absolutely within your truth. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, you mentioned safety protocols. You yes, to, um... yes. Uh, these are extremely important inside an awakening process. For couples who are both uh, actively pursuing Kundalini, uh, the safety protocols should be a daily practice. Not yeah. just not just to each other, no, not just to each other, but to everyone in their sphere of, of uh, human influence, or their sphere of human communication. Uh, and then, of course, for each other as well. And uh, you can reach these if you go to the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. Go to the left hand menu, and you'll see the safeties. You can go ahead and read these. There, there, there's more than a few there, but some of the main ones will be to be as forgiving as you can possibly be. Really, forgiveness is a, is an aspect of divine love. You are expressing a divine quality when you can sincerely forgive another person for a for a, a, a trespass uh, uh, received uh, by you from them and also forgiving yourself for a, 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 a trespass uh, given by you towards another none of these none of these uh, patterns of expression are instantaneously cemented into our beings. We have to practice them daily. We have to practice them with all of our human interaction. And and, and especially in, in, in regards to a, a relationship with each other, with the two people that are in the relationship. Uh, and if you have kids, then, then with the kids. I mean, really, you know how easy it is to forgive a child. You know, a child, you know, puts a crayon in their mouth and then starts drawing on the wall with it. Well, oh, no, no, honey, you don't want to eat the crayon, and we certainly don't want to decorate the wall. Well, that is how you can approach other people who may not know that that they are, you know, encroaching on parameters of, of uh, appropriate expression with you. And that appropriate expression is defined by our societal agreements. So, it's, it, you know, it's not a, you, you're not groping in blindness here. You have societal agreements. I don't care what part of the world you live in. There is a societal agreement to the society you live in, and, and you're going to live and work and play and love within those agreements. Now, not, not you know, all societies are the same. So, uh-huh. yeah. It's interesting what you said about um, not holding a grudge with a child, against a child, and this is so true. I think we tend to hold grudges against our spouses or partners. <laughs> if they do something that you don't like, you hold a grudge and you kind of resent it. But with a child, with your own child, I think it's uh, you don't really do that. You know, you do learn. You, you do 
So, some, yeah. some, some people will do that, and, and yes, you're correct. You know, it's much easier to hold a grudge against a spouse because the spouse is supposed to know better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just not always the case. The spouse doesn't always know better. That's you know, true. and that's that's where communication is so important. That's where okay. trust is so important. That's where the willingness to 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 uh, express love through personal experience is so important. Not yeah. no no one is going to be exactly on the same path. Right. <laughs> Nobody is going to have the same ability to communicate. We are we're all different. Mm-hmm. So in respect of each other, you know, we we can allow those differences to be as they are, and we can we can work and we can strive to uh, improve just the lines of communication to the point where we're understood in our feelings, our feelings of love, our our feelings of forgiveness, our feelings of tolerance and patience and grace, and all all of the really uh, excellent. Uh, reflections of love that that uh, really can hold a relationship, um, you know, in in a, in a divine embrace. You know, this is not it's not rocket science, and it's not difficult. It is natural, really. It is a natural expression for those who are within a relationship based upon uh, love and respect for one another. Kind of comes naturally. Yeah. The people in that in that position, and it also can come naturally to a person who is not within a relationship. You just expand it into the areas of society that are that are appropriate. You know, in other words, that that are acceptable to other members of society to receive it from. So, for instance, you know, by illustrating that uh, uh-huh. a person not in a relationship, you know, wouldn't, uh, you know. Uh, Expand themselves to the point where they're where they're offering uh, you know uh, marital opportunity with somebody at work or something like that. You know you you have your you have your societal expectations and they work for the society you're living in. And so you know it, within that context, though, you can really, really, really uh, extol the virtuous qualities of the safeties and uh, and still remain a single and, and unattached individual. So will the intensive be for all levels? Well, yeah, yeah. It, it, here's the thing with the Kundalini. Uh, Kundalini knows. Kundalini knows you. Uh, Shandi, when I brought you up in front of the, uh, the seminar at the Gateway in West Los Angeles, uh, Kundalini knew exactly what you needed to have done. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was no, there was no question. There was no uh, ignorance about it. it. I mean, it was simply a matter of you opening to it, and yeah. and the flow, the flow coming through, and it did, and it will for each person at the intensive. There is going to be an opportunity for Shakti Pot, which is a transference or an activation of an individual's kundalini through a person such as myself. And, you know, it, 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 it is up to anybody who wants to have it. Uh, they will be given a specific safety protocol. So because of the power of the kundalini, a person can be overwhelmed. Uh, and I mean extremely pleasantly overwhelmed. Uh, bliss and ecstasy is not uncommon. It is not uncommon. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're at the uh, the Bandy Canyon Resort down in San Diego. Is that what it's, it, it's called, the Bandy Canyon Resort, correct? Yes. Or uh, Bandy Canyon uh, Ranch. Bandy Canyon Ranch. That, you know, from what I've seen of it and, and, and the feeling I'm getting from it, it's a very safe place to have this occur. And uh, as people come to these to 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 a seminar or an intensive as we're having, um, I will I will always be there to help you. And an aspect of Chrism will always be there to help you. You will not be left alone with this. This is so true. You and, and you stress this at 
over the weekend, and you gave your phone number to everyone, and just you're so open and so willing to share and um, help people go through this process that, you know, it's a really wonderful thing. And, um, you know, I really appreciate, you know, you, you called me, you were concerned. Uh, and it, it's just very nice to know that you have that kind of support. And it's well, very safe. It, it, it's, yes, it's very safe. It's, it's, um, it is really a, it is a big vertical spiritual step for anyone. Yes on this planet and uh, for a person who is really really seeking uh, one of the highest platforms of spiritual expression then I do suggest that you explore the Kundalini absolutely the um, if you feel any kind of resistance and I, I would just like to say that it could be the ego reacting because ego doesn't want to change and so if anybody has that, I would say stand strong and firm and, you know, just subdue that guy and say, no, I'm, I'm going to transform. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, the, 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 ego, the, the ego will resist. The ego will, will resist any kind of a change that will deprive it of calling the shots for an individual. Right. So, so you know, the, the ego, I do not teach the death of the ego. I do not mm-hmm. teach the destruction of the ego. Uh, I, I suggest and I invite uh-huh. people to look at their ego as one would look at a 10- to 12-year-old child. Somebody who wants it now, Daddy. I want it now, Daddy. You know, that type of a person, a little kid. And you don't, we, we don't kill the little kids in our society. We don't destroy them. Uh-huh. We, we educate them. We we help them to come and, and into a more them. right, exactly. We we help them come into a more appropriate expression in society, so that they may flower within that society. And it's the same with the ego. The ego gets to come with us in the Kundalini process. No, uh-huh. it does not. It it is no longer. Uh, you know, we we no longer live an impulse driven, ego based life. That gets changed. The ego is not destroyed. The ego is not killed. It is nurtured and it's trained and it's helped to come into its own divine expression within the Kundalini. So, yes, so the, the ego has a chance to, uh, yeah, to become a divine entity or what? Yeah, an, an exalted force of the individual. Because we have to remember that the ego is very important to survival on this planet. It's yeah. very important to to how we emerge within our society as the individual that we are, having yeah. gone through all the, the the schooling and the relationships and the work experiences and the the many different experiences that a lifetime can give, and not all of those experiences are pleasant. And the mm-hmm. ego is one of the forces that helps us survive these these varied life experiences, and and it uh, it, it it is of course. Uh, enamored with the idea of being in control all the time, but it it will it will learn and it will begin to understand from a Kundalini perspective mm-hmm. what is best for the whole. And once mm-hmm. we begin to really recognize the ego for the for the for the child self that it is, and for the loving and an important aspect that it brings into our existence, it's much easier to just allow it to be retrained, you know, make the behavior modifications appropriate to the safety protocols, and the ego will begin to also work from those areas of expression. Yeah, I'm just sitting here. I was um, just kind of thinking about what happened at the seminar. That was really quite... um quite an experience it's, it's, it's unusual you have to remember that when I'm at a seminar I you know there the Kundalini expresses quite freely and, it, and it's quite strong and it will radiate on everybody who's around it when I'm in the oh. grocery store when I'm in the grocery store it, it's not so expressive which is good you know yeah. because not everybody not everybody's ready to have this right 
what, what's good about um, prison is that, you know, you're very normal. It's not like um, you're, you can see that uh, the Kundalini is awakened, and, but, but you're a normal being, and I think, um, you know, people can relate to that a lot, um, you know, because you're, you're living your existence like all of us. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's that's very true. I mean, and and that is that is as it is for everyone too. No one no one needs to become exalted over another person. However, some yeah. things some things do occur. Uh, you yeah. know, people people start you know like having dreams about their teacher or or uh-huh. you know, certain expressions of some of these divine gifts that come with it. Uh you know that can. That's true. Yeah, people can get kind of knocked over by some of those things, but really, any of the divine expressions, everybody has the potential for. They're only they're only u- unique and, and and unusual because not too many people have them in expression. Mm-hmm. The healing and the bilocation and the, you know, the the journeying into the uh, to the uh, other spiritual areas, all of that. You know, even the distant Shakti pot, you know, people uh-huh. people get blown away by that. And it's, you know, I just want everyone to know that just the way, you know, Christ said it so correctly. You know, everything I do, you can do and more. That is such a true statement. Mm-hmm. This is true. So, so for those who are listening that have a Christian orientation, Really, really, really look at that statement, and and I I invite you to really begin to believe it, because I have found it to be true. Mm-hmm. So Kundal so Kundalini awakenings happens to everyone, regardless of what their um, spiritual um, background or. Yes, well, the potential is there for everyone who has a spine. And, <laughs> okay. And, you know, so so yes, everyone has the last three vertebra of the tailbone. And they don't, the, the they won't three have and a half. the religion or anything like that. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Unless you know, if your religion is really a hurtful matrix of of expressions against the earth, against other people, against oneself, then uh, no, they they because of the density of that type of a of an expression, then it may be difficult for that person to have kundalini. It doesn't mean the potential's not there. It just means that they're being um, uh, they're 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 being caged by the by a belief system. Well, what about people with uh, disabilities? Can they also participate? Of course, of course, okay. absolutely. You know, it'll just <laughs> come to them. And it'll come to them in a different way. Um, it you know, also has a very healing effect, doesn't it? It does, it does. But if you come into it just as a the goal for healing, then then you know you're going. You, you may be disappointed because you may not you may not be due a healing for whatever it is that ails you. You may be there for a karmic reason, and the Kundalini will not necessarily just release you from karmic bonds as some of the uh, some of the other belief systems suggest, oh, once you've reached Kundalini, well, then you have no more karma. Well, hello, you developed all that karma before you even reached the Kundalini. So, you know, I got news for you. Um, But you can also receive miraculous healings through the Kundalini. Absolutely miraculous. You can get hit by a truck and be healed by the Kundalini. Seriously. Quite amazing. She is so full of um, love. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. And this also goes for heartbreak. Uh-huh. Yeah. Instead of the relationship, instead of the relationship <laughs> I know dynamic, about that. <laughs> well, heartbreak is a, is a, is a, is a, that is a very, 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 you know, important um, condition for a person to have. It brings into very stark clarity, uh, issues of self-doubt, issues of doubt. Mm -hmm. Right, issues of doubt for other people, issues of of self-worth come into 
to a real stark review. And, you know, inside of the Kundalini, that can be even amplified a thousand times stronger. Yeah. Heartbreak is, is ex an exalted difficulty within the Kundalini, but also so is the death of a loved one. Okay, well, people yeah. need, yes, people need to be very, very, very aware mm -hmm. that they have the Kundalini and these feelings will become much, much stronger. They need to begin to understand that nobody on this world makes it out alive. But you know, having the Kundalini awakened also helps you to recover and um, much, much, it accelerates it. As well. Oh yes, the, the healing is vastly accelerated, but yeah. and it must be. It really must be because the uh, the the experience can be so incredibly strong and powerful that that you know a person can really you know make some some mistakes uh, inside of that pain. And so of course the the Kundalini, being the nurturing mother that it is will come in and begin to really make some repairs on that person's heart. And it is as a strengthening. It is as a lesson. It is as a test. And it is yeah. as a as a an endurance quality and a, and a and a really you know a, a vast understanding you know of what love is, of what of how how at the same time it is so fragile, you know, it's the, the the vein of, a, of of the wing of a dragonfly and its fragility, and yet the endurance that can move a mountain is right. all of that is exemplified within love, love for others and love for self and love for the yeah. divine within. And you can emerge a lot more stronger and with a greater purpose. Than yes, much stronger and with greater purpose and with. With a greater uh, ability to to express that purpose. Yes. yes I, so you know, women who are, or even men who are going through any kind of um, emotional um, upheaval at this time, I I, I hope I, I really do think that this this um, intensive will be very 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 helpful. Um, Prism is doing su such a wonderful job, um, wonderful work. In helping, um, helping us understand and um, um, you know, the understand and um, bring her and into apply. our lives. Yeah, apply the understandings. Life. You you can understand and not apply, or you can understand and then apply. And I and I do suggest that people understand and then apply those understandings to their lives. It's wonderful. I've got just a few minutes here, <clears throat> but I'd like to give that uh, website again. It's Kundalini Awakening Seminar dot com or Kundalini Awakening Systems dot. Oh, I'm sorry, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. And the intensive is October twenty third and twenty fourth and twenty fifth. And there's a, a pre-intensive lecture October 18th and October 21st. I do suggest people come to the to the lecture. Yes. So much information is given uh, at the at the intensive. So much information is given that it it gives you time to to sleep on it and to to kind of digest what you have heard at the lecture before you come to the, sem to the uh, seminar, the intensive. So I do suggest that people attend the, uh, and, and you know, the lecture. You can also ask me questions, you know, that would pertain to your personal situation as well. Uh-huh. And you can determine whether or not you think you're ready for it at that time. Yes. All right, and so we will um, to register or for any um, for more information, you can call Anna at six six one three six one four eight three eight, or you can email her at zinnia print. That's Z as in zebra. I N 
N I A, like the flower, Zinnia, print, P R I N T, at live.com. And she'd be happy to assist you as well. And we're talking with Master Chrism, who I want to thank for a, a, an amazing weekend. <laughs> and really, I, I, I hope you all get on get on the train, get on the car, and join us in San Diego. It's, it's going to really be um, quite, quite yeah. I, I hear you're take you're, you're taking a train down there, Shanti. Yeah, I'm going to take a train because it'll only take a couple of hours to get there from LA. That sounds like fun. I know, and I heard it's beautiful, beautiful scenery. So I've uh, told Anna, let's go on the train. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. <laughs> uh huh. We get to see the ocean, and oh, I'm excited. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun at this um, event. So I hope to see you all, the Bandy Ranch Canyon, uh, Canyon Ranch. I'm sorry. See, I told you I'm getting all uh, weird because of. Um, I, I've been on the go 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 chrism, and you know now I'm kind of getting a little um, a little sleepy, but I still have so much energy that <laughs> it's so it's amazing what you can accomplish. Oh my gosh! Yep, the creative juices are flowing. Oh my John. goodness! And I feel that um, oh the 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 vibration and the pulsating just continually in, in my feet or in my forehead and. Um, I, I just don't have time to just really stop and um, be sleepy. I, I just have so much energy. <laughs> well, you know, just re- just remember that all of this energy isn't just going outward. It's also coming inward. It's protecting your immune system. It's protecting your body. It's helping you with your the the new way that your energy is expressing through the pathways on the body. And I'd like to touch on the the relationship to each other, to a spouse within panic situations. And I know we're running out of time, but I do want to say this about Kundalini for, for everyone. Don't worry about the swine flu. The Kundalini can protect you against the swine flu or any of the flus, uh, either manufactured or natural, that uh, you may come in contact with. So uh, from a from a health-based perspective, kundalini is one of the most healthy things that can happen for a body. Yeah, I believe that. I don't um, take flu shots and I never get sick. Yep, I, I, and I will not recommend anyone participate in the uh, flu shots. But if they do, you know, I would still suggest that you look at Kundalini as a venue for the health of the five bodies of expression that each person has. And that is most most inclusive of the physical uh, as well. Okay. Well, we'll continue this talk in um, maybe in a couple of weeks, Prism, um, because there's so much more to say. I mean, it's, you know, we could write, talk volumes and volumes. Well, we could talk a long, long time, and but I, I know that that uh, Blog Talk Radio does have a kind of, I believe it's an hour time limit or so for the live broadcast. So yeah, and I, I would like to express my gratitude and thanks to Shadi Davy uh, for inviting uh, uh, me here to to talk about uh, Kundalini and the relationships, and I'd like to express my gratitude to all of you who are listening. And uh, within the radius of my voice, if you also feel a, a tingling at the base of your spine, feel free to contact me. I am at K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at Yahoo.com. K-Fire for all at Yahoo.com. K-Fire for all. Okay, at Yahoo.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, and thank you, everybody, for being with us. And we'll see you next week, Wednesday. And continue to talk about talks about relationships. Thank you so much. Thank you, Master Prism. Thank you, Shadi. Oh